Hi, and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Angela Taylor, and I'm the Director of Programs with the Lewy Body Dementia Association. Today we're going to talk about Lewy Body Dementia, or LBD. And while this is a disease that most people have never heard of, LBD is actually the second most common form of progressive dementia. Up until about 10 years ago, even many neurologists were unfamiliar with it. This talk will cover the basics about LBD. I'll talk about what it is and how it's different from other conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. I'll go over LBD symptoms and how it's diagnosed and treated. Then I'll talk a little bit about the Lewy Body Dementia Association and what you can do to raise awareness about LBD. But first, let me tell you a little bit about dementia. Dementia is not a single disease. It's actually a clinical syndrome or a collection of symptoms, and it has many different potential causes. It means that a person is no longer able to independently manage aspects of their everyday lives, such as their finances, medication, personal hygiene, or household tasks, due to a significant decline in their ability to think and reason. Dementia affects a person's abilities in more than one cognitive area, such as memory, the ability to recall what has been learned or experienced, language, the ability to understand words and express oneself with words, judgment, the ability to form sound opinions or make good decisions, executive function, the ability to plan, solve problems, and understand abstract concepts, visual spatial function, understanding how items or places are physically related to each other in space, and attention, the ability to mentally focus on something, such as someone talking or one's surroundings. While most of us are familiar with Alzheimer's disease, dementia can have many other causes. For example, some medical conditions, including vitamin B12 deficiency and thyroid disease, can cause dementia symptoms. These conditions can be treated with medication, and the dementia symptoms can be reversed, returning a person to their usual mental abilities. But the most common forms of dementia are incurable and progressive, and that means they get worse over time. Alzheimer's disease is the cause of approximately 50 to 70% of all dementia cases and features prominent memory problems plus changes in thinking and behavior. It generally affects people over the age of 60, but a small percentage of people develop Alzheimer's at a younger age. Alzheimer's is more common in women. Lewy body dementias, or LBD, affect thinking, movement, behavior, sleep, and also automated bodily functions like blood pressure and digestion. The term LBD refers to two related clinical diagnoses, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Like Alzheimer's, LBD predominantly affects adults over the age of 60, although a small percentage of people are being diagnosed with LBD in their 40s and 50s. LBD is slightly more common in men than in women. We'll use the term Lewy body dementia, or LBD, as an umbrella term today to include both clinical diagnoses. The two forms of LBD start with different presenting symptoms, but over time they progress to a very similar combination of symptoms. And one of those two diagnoses is formally named dementia with Lewy bodies, and it's the second most common cause of progressive dementia. Research shows that it accounts for an estimated 15 to 35 percent of all dementia. Other causes of dementia include vascular dementia and frontotemporal dementia. So what exactly is Lewy body dementia? We use the term fairly generically to refer to, refer to two related disorders that both cause dementia. They have very similar symptoms and also share the same underlying changes in the brain. But what makes them different is the order in which two of the LBD symptoms appear. When a person develops dementia and around the same time or later also develops symptoms that resemble Parkinson's disease plus any other LBD symptoms, they're diagnosed with dementia with Lewy bodies. But when a person is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and has little or no cognitive impairment, but over a year later also develops dementia, they're diagnosed with Parkinson's disease dementia. This is also a form of LBD. So determining what name will be used in diagnosing LBD is directly related to whether dementia occurs before or after Parkinson's symptoms. For simplicity's sake, in today's presentation, 
we'll refer to both onset types as Lewy body dementia. LBD is not a new disease. Over 100 years ago, Dr. Friedrich Lewy found protein deposits, which are now called Lewy bodies, when he was doing brain autopsies of people with Parkinson's disease. But it took many years for researchers to understand that these Lewy body deposits are associated not just with Parkinson's disease, but they also cause a distinct form of dementia. I'll go into LBD's symptoms more later on, but throughout the talk, I'll share some real-life examples of how the earliest symptoms of LBD can vary, so you can understand why sometimes it's difficult to diagnose LBD in early stages. In a recent study, 78% of LBD caregivers indicated that LBD was not the first diagnosis their loved one received. The most common initial diagnoses were other forms of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease, a movement disorder like Parkinson's disease, or a psychiatric dis uh, disorder. So here's our first example of one person's early LBD symptoms. Mildred's symptoms started subtly and included moving more slowly, shuffling her feet, and having some reduced manual dexterity. She was also having problems playing familiar card games or making favorite family recipes. But Mildred was still fairly independent and was able to go to the doctors by herself and after seeing a neurologist, she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. But the cognitive problems remained the bigger concern for her family. When she progressed to late stage dementia, the family learned she had a form of LBD. The criteria doctors use to diagnose the two forms of LBD are slightly different. So for today's discussion, we'll review the symptoms that lead to a diagnosis of dementia with Lewy bodies. Now remember, that's the form of LBD where dementia develops before or at the same time as Parkinson's symptoms. So LBD affects many areas of the brain that control a lot of different functions, which means it causes a lot of symptoms that to you and me might seem unrelated. It affects thinking, movement, behavior, sleep, and even things like blood pressure and digestion. But LBD symptom combinations and severity of symptoms can vary by, person, by each person in the early stage of the disease. Now, dementia is the one symptom everyone must have in order to get the LBD diagnosis. It causes problems with memory, problem solving, planning, and abstract or analytical thinking. And it's important to point out that unlike Alzheimer's disease, notable simple memory problems may not be seen in the early stages of LBD. Other symptoms help to set LBD apart from Alzheimer's disease, but remember, not every person with LBD will have all of these symptoms by the time they're diagnosed. Cognitive fluctuations include unpredictable changes in concentration, attention, and alertness from day to day or even hour to hour. Visual hallucinations are seeing things that are not really present. Parkinson's, excuse me, Parkinson's-like symptoms or Parkinsonism, include rigidity or stiffness, shuffling gait, tremor, and reduced or slowed movement. REM sleep behavior disorder, or RBD, involves acting out dreams, sometimes violently. Now, this symptom appears in some people years or even decades before any changes in cognition. Some sleep partners have reported being physically injured when the disorder was left untreated. A severe sensitivity to antipsychotic medications, sometimes called neuroleptics, is common in LBD. Now, this is very important because antipsychotic medications are sometimes used to treat hallucinations or other serious behavioral disorders, but many people with LBD have severe reactions to them. Not even the newer atypical antipsychotic medications are considered absolutely safe. They must be used very conservatively at the lowest dose and for the shortest time possible. People with LBD also have abnormal results on some types of brain scans showing the loss of a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which affects movement. The other symptoms listed are common in LBD but are not part of the diagnostic criteria, such as problems with constipation, incontinence, blood pressure regulation, etc. People with LBD may experience many types of behavioral symptoms, such as hallucinations, which are seeing, hearing, or sometimes smelling things that aren't there, delusions, which are a fixed false belief, 
For example, believing that someone is stealing from them or believing that someone is going to harm them. Illusions are distorted perceptions. For example, seeing a rope but thinking it's a snake. Capgrass syndrome is a recurrent and transient belief or a passing belief that a person, usually somebody closely related, has been replaced by an imposter. Apathy is a loss of interest in activities that used to be enjoyed or a loss of motivation. Depression is a mood disorder causing sadness, increased frustration, fatigue, loss of interest in activities, and changes in appetite or sleep. And anxiety is a general sense of apprehension or fear, and that can result in agitation. Bruce was a retired engineer and an avid golfer, and he started having some mild confusion and nightly, vivid, frightening nightmares that he physically acted out in his sleep. That's the REM sleep behavior disorder that I just talked about. His neurologist diagnosed him in the early 2000s with the sleep disorder and mild cognitive impairment. At the time, doctors didn't know that REM sleep behavior disorder was a risk factor for Lewy body dementia. Two years after his initial diagnosis, Bruce's confusion had progressed to dementia, and he was no longer able to live in his own home, and he was diagnosed with LBD after seeing a neuropsychologist for cognitive testing. LBD and Parkinson's are closely related and may even be part of the same disease spectrum. People with LBD can have many of the same symptoms as people with Parkinson's disease. For example, problems with movement, including slower, smaller movements, impaired dexterity, tremors in limbs that are at rest or in use, stiffness, slower shuffling gait, balance problems, and falls. When someone with Parkinson's disease later develops dementia, it's called Parkinson's disease dementia and is one form of Lewy body dementia. People with LBD have the same type of biological changes occurring in their brains as people with Parkinson's. These changes are deposits of the Lewy bodies that I mentioned in the beginning. Lewy bodies are made of a natural occurring protein, actually two proteins, called alpha-synuclein and ubiquitin. However, these deposits are located in different places in the brain in the early stages of Parkinson's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies. By the end stages, however, the Lewy bodies have progressed to be in the same places in the brain in both disorders. When someone has Parkinson's disease without dementia, the Lewy bodies are found largely in the brain stem. And this is the lower part of the brain that connects the cerebrum or brain hemispheres with the spinal cord. The brain stem relays motor and sensory signals and is involved in movement as well as other functions related to mood, sleep, wakefulness, and autonomic function. These people typically have years of motor symptoms and many of them also later develop dementia. But in LBD, the Lewy bodies are not just in the brain stem but also in the cerebral cortex. And this is the outer deeply folded layer of the brain, also uh, often associated with higher thinking. There's still a lot we don't know about how LBD and Parkinson's are related. For example, we don't know, uh, I'm sorry, we know that older adults with Parkinson's are at a higher risk for developing dementia over time. But we're not sure why it only affects some people with Parkinson's and not all of them. There's still much more research that needs to be done. Now, Alzheimer's and LBD are different not just in what symptoms are involved, but in what proteins are involved. In Alzheimer's disease, two proteins uh, called beta amyloid and tau cause the formation of plaques and tangles to form in the brain. And the symptoms of Alzheimer's are different. In early Alzheimer's disease, memory loss is prominent, while in LBD, memory is fairly intact, but attention and alertness are reduced, and that might mimic memory problems. Interestingly, it's common for a person with Alzheimer's or LBD to have biological changes in the brain of both disorders, though one disorder is normally the more dominant. So you can imagine that if a person has LBD but also displays some mild signs of Alzheimer's disease, it will make diagnosis all the more challenging for the physician. So you're thinking, boy, this must be a rare disorder because I've never heard about it before. 
Well, it really isn't. There's an estimated 1.3 million people in the United States with LBD, and that's more people than with Parkinson's disease or even HIV. So why haven't more people heard about it? Well, that's a good question. LBD wasn't very well understood by the medical community until the late 20th century. A lot of LBD research is new, and not every physician is up to date uh, with the most current research advances. And the truth is, LBD is very hard to diagnose. There's no one test or scan that a doctor can use and say with certainty that you have LBD. The criteria for diagnosing LBD are very complex, and most primary care physicians won't have much experience diagnosing the disease. LBDA strongly suggests requesting a referral to a specialist, such as a neurologist, to obtain a diagnosis if LBD is even suspected. If you live near a teaching hospital, you might have access to a specialty clinic for movement disorders or dementia. These clinics may offer the highest level of LBD clinical expertise in your community, and they may even provide an opportunity to participate in research studies. However, outside of specialty clinics and a few hospital departments like neurology or psychiatry, the rest of the staff in a hospital setting may be unfamiliar with LBD entirely. So often it's up to the family to educate hospital medical professionals about LBD. Is there someone in your life, perhaps a parent, a sibling, a friend or a neighbor who's having the kinds of symptoms we've been talking about? We know it can be very uncomfortable to approach the topic of memory problems or cognitive decline with someone you love, but there are very good reasons why you should. An early diagnosis provides the person with dementia an opportunity to share their wishes about the decisions that will need to be made in their future. It also allows for early treatment that can maximize their independence and their quality of life, and it allows you to talk about safety issues such as driving and living accommodations. Equally as important, if a person with LBD is misdiagnosed with another condition, they can end up being treated with certain medications that may worsen their LBD symptoms or even cause serious harm. So have those difficult discussions and talk to your doctor if you or someone you love are experiencing any LBD symptoms. Diagnosing the cause of dementia is difficult and involves many steps. The doctor will ask about a person's medical history and any cognitive, psychological, or behavioral symptoms. They'll do a thorough physical and neurological exam. They may order blood tests to rule out other causes for dementia symptoms. They'll perform tests that assess cognition in general and its specific areas such as memory, language, executive function, and visual spatial skills. Some of these are short tests done on the spot. Others require a longer appointment with a neuropsychologist. It's important to note that some brief cognitive tests done in the doctor's office at a preliminary visit, like the Mini Mental State Exam, or MMSE, are not sensitive enough to detect early LBD. The doctor may also order one or more brain scans, like an MRI, to rule out other disorders. Additional tests are recommended to diagnose LBD. Neuropsychological exams are much more extensive and sensitive than the routine office tests of mental status and can help differentiate among LBD, Alzheimer's disease, and the usually mild changes associated with normal aging and other neurological conditions. Other brain scans can assess changes in brain function and structure, which are helpful in diagnosing LBD. I've talked a lot about diagnosis because really it is a big deal. Now, some people and some families will spend years going from doctor to doctor trying to get a diagnosis. But when the doctor finally does say, this is Lewy body dementia, your next question might be, well, can it be treated? People with LBD experience symptoms that can limit their ability to function normally and may also be disturbing. But many of these symptoms can and should be treated because it significantly improves the quality of life for both the person with LBD and their primary caregiver. Medications originally developed to treat Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and sleep, psychiatric, and mood disorders are commonly used in LBD. Now, these medications are commonly prescribed in LBD in order to lessen the cognitive symptoms, reduce Parkinsonism, 
treat sleep disorders, improve cognitive fluctuation or apathy, um, decrease hallucinations or delusions, uh, and to treat coexisting depression and anxiety. Medication should be prescribed very carefully, as I said, though, because some medication side effects can make other LBD symptoms worse. For example, levodopa is used to treat the motor symptoms of LBD, but it can worsen other symptoms such as sleepiness, um, cognition, or hallucinations and delusions. So sometimes it's, it's a difficult balancing act, even for physicians who are LBD experts. The bottom line is to remember that severe medication sensitivities to antipsychotic medications are common in LBD and that the older traditional antipsychotic drugs should especially be avoided. Now, regarding the last item on this slide, uh, antidepressants, I just want to mention that there are numerous medications in these classes of drugs that can be used in LBD, and I've only listed two here as examples. Now, not all treatments require medication. Physical therapy includes cardiovascular, strengthening and flexibility exercises, gait training, fall prevention, home safety evaluation, and general physical fitness programs. Occupational therapy helps to maintain skills and promotes functional ability and independence. Music and aromatherapy may help reduce anxiety and improve mood. Speech therapy may improve low voice volume, poor enunciation, muscular strength, and swallowing difficulties. Individual and family psychotherapy may be useful for learning strategies to manage emotional and behavioral symptoms and to help make plans that address individual and family concerns about the future. Sadly, though, despite all of these different treatment options, there is no way to prevent LBD, halt its progression, or cure it. Knowing what to expect in the future is an essential component of managing LBD, and the long-term prognosis is a difficult fact that LBD families need to know. Like in Alzheimer's disease, people with Lewy body dementia can have a shorter or longer progression, and that makes predicting prognosis very difficult. In most cases, the average life expectancy from the time a person is diagnosed is five to seven years, though that can really vary considerably. In general, those with fewer health issues will live longer than those with more health issues. Better family and social support helps people with LBD live longer than those without much support. And appropriate care can improve quality of life for both the patient and the caregiver. As you can imagine, with a disease that affects so many aspects of a person's abilities from early in the disorder, the level of caregiver burden is quite high. Research has shown that people with Lewy body dementia are more functionally impaired than people with Alzheimer's disease. And people with LBD are more impaired in self-care skills, motor skills, and experience more neuropsychiatric symptoms, especially hallucinations, than people with Alzheimer's. Here's one more example of how LBD symptoms can progress. Betty was first diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. She didn't have much of a tremor, but her handwriting had become small. She had a shuffling gait, and she'd become rather stooped over. But when she started having hallucinations, her children had become alarmed. Betty was also having problems with confusion and visual-spatial orientation, like the day she walked to the edge of a tile floor and was unable to step onto the adjoining carpet. Soon, Betty's Parkinson's progressed to Parkinson's disease dementia. The Lewy Body Dementia Association is the only organization in the country solely dedicated to issues facing LBD families. We're leading the call for all changes that will result in a better life for those affected by LBD. And our mission is to educate and support LBD families, increase awareness about LBD in the public and healthcare profession, and increase research. We can't make LBD a household name, though, without your help. We'd like everyone to find some way, no matter how small, to pass along what you've learned about LBD. So tell someone about LBD. Pass along one of LBDA's handouts or post something about LBD on Facebook. If you've personally been touched by LBD or you have professional skills you'd like to share, consider volunteering for LBDA. And we hope you'll consider making a donation to us as well. Every dollar you donate is like a candle that shines just a little bit more light to raise awareness about LBD. 
I'd like to thank you for your time and for learning more about LBD. Um, please visit our website for more information uh, and join us uh, on social media as well. Thank you and have a nice day.